this is albino corn right there see it sunflower right here has gotten so big that I've had to stake it up with all the wet 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 weather we had it started to lean and it's so big it's gonna have such a big head on it that I didn't want it to I didn't want anything to happen to it I didn't want it to bend or break or anything like that so I put a stake in the ground and tied it to it and the stakes starting to bend also right along with it but uh, it's it's getting close to about maybe nine feet here we go. Bring it down closer. I actually planted more corn. If you can see all this corn, I put a couple rows in. But I'm bringing it down close because I want to show you. I took some chicken wire and just cut it in little strips uh, about a foot, a foot wide and however long I could get them. Um, I ended up having to lay a couple of them over it. Um, but the reason I did that was because I I planted all the corn and stuff started yanking them out again. All the birds and everything was having a heyday with them. And I planted it super, super thick because I figured something would get into it and uh, I'm going to have to weed them all out. Um, not really weed them out, but just thin them out. And you can see I've got a, a row right here along the corn. And then I've got another row right here. corn and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to space them out right but I was just pissed off with all the drama I've been having with my corn and uh, just one thing after another between the raccoons getting in here or the deer and the storms blowing everything over uh, but you can see everything's kind of starting to stand back up again some nice tall tall ears but uh, something's still coming in. All the stuff that's been knocked over, something's kind of chewing on them and stuff. So, so I don't know. But I figured, you know what? It's still early enough in the year that I can go ahead and plant some more. I've never planted any uh, as late as uh, July, at the end of July. But I put some in a week ago. And that's what these little rows here are. Let me show you. I put some more over here. Put a nice row right here. See, I didn't have enough to do the whole thing, so there's some that's not caged. But I want to show you something super, super cool. I'm sure you can see it from right there and also right there. Let me get this grass out of the way. But this is albino corn right there. See it? I've got another one right here. Pretty cool. You've got the regular corn right here, right next to it. And then right back here you've got some albino corn. Now, I've had this happen in the past and for it to happen, uh, for me to have a couple of them already in this little batch right here. Um, I haven't had any with these seeds, but I've had popcorn in the past um, that I've kept seeds multiple years and I've had a few uh, random albino ones but I haven't I haven't gotten any of them to live in the past they don't produce chlorophyll the way a normal plant does so they don't really live that long uh, because of all the Sun they basically get sunburn 
and uh, they lose all their moisture through their leaves because um, they just they can't produce chlorophyll the way the other ones do and you can kind of see this one's leaf is kind of getting messed up um, but before anything happened to these little guys before they got yanked out or before they get uh, you know overdose on sunshine and stuff like that I wanted to show them to you and I thought it was really cool albino corn now, if these were to be grown somehow where there is no sun, or you could control the UV, you know, if you were growing them in hydroponics or something, or, I don't know, I think it'd be possible. I think it'd be cool to have a white corn plant with some, like, blue or purple corn, uh, corn on it. You know, that'd be kind of cool, but it just, uh, it just doesn't make it. I've had, like I said, I've had it in the past, and, uh, the little guy got about, like, about, like, that big, and then it just burnt up but yeah I've replanted the corn and uh, this one here has got like a little double ear coming out of it growing out of the same stalk and that's the one I tied up because uh, it fell over well, it didn't fall over it kind of got pushed over and something chewed on it down here so I staked it back up and this one here it's got a full tassel on it but hasn't started producing any ears. <laughs> so, this is all seed that I had bought. A lot of there, there's still some genetic stuff in these seeds that need to get worked out. Um, you know, you need to basically select the, the stuff that does the best for your area. I'm not really sure where these seeds were originally grown for this corn, but uh, you can tell that some are just better than others and um, some produce better better ears than others and some don't even produce any ears so you kinda gotta go through and select the varieties that you want select the strongest and best you know for your area the stuff that does good where, where you're at keep those seeds from those keep them year after year and eventually you have some really good healthy corn um, versus when you buy seeds of anything you gotta it's gonna take you a couple years to really uh, get those seeds to adapt but yeah I wanted to show you show you all the new corn that we just put in put in a new row right here and there's some sweet potatoes taking over got a bunch of squash Let me show you got one I just saw one there's one a little round butternut and this is a really cool this almost looks like watermelon leaves but this is the butternut the round butternut a lot of them look like this but this one one plants kicking these out tomatoes looking good they're starting to get some some color to them and probably the last thing I'm gonna show you other than uh, the albino corn that's over there is this squash now this is the ancient squash this is that uh, those round white egg squash that I found and uh, basically picked them out of a bunch of uh, um, gourds you know Halloween decorative gourds and stuff like that and I found a bunch of round perfectly round white ones that I showed you guys and I planted them now this thing's been growing like crazy, spreading everywhere. It's spreading over here, spreading over there, but it's only produced one fruit on the whole damn, multiple, on multiple plants, it's only produced one fruit. Now I would consider this to be a fail <laughs> because this, it, it must have crossed with something else and for some reason it's just not producing that well. And uh, the, the, the plant's growing, awesome. Don't get me wrong, the plant's growing. It's still taking over that tomato over there. But the only fruit it's produced is this thing. Look at this thing. This is not what I originally planted. Um, when you're not growing your seeds yourself and making sure nothing crosses, squash is very, uh, uh, very, uh, it likes to spread. It likes to spread around. It, it spreads very easily. It crosses very easily. So this almost looks like some type of darn zucchini crossed with that egg that little tiny little round egg squash um, but look it's growing on a big vine you know zucchini doesn't grow on a on a vine it grows on a little bush but yeah it's very similar to like a zucchini 
It's starting to turn yellow, but it's been like this minty, minty green. Yeah, I don't know. I decided to keep it anyways. Who knows? I, I don't even know why I'm keeping it. It's not like the thing would be worth saving. Uh, you save some seeds from this, and eventually, I mean, you want something that's productive. If you're, you want to weed stuff like that out, you know. Um, you don't necessarily want to keep something that is going to take over your garden and only produce one fruit for you. You know, squash can be very, very productive where each vine has, you know, three to five uh, squash or pumpkins on it versus, versus just this one. So, if I'm going to grow those little egg squash, I'm going to order the seeds uh, from Baker Creek. Just a quick update. I want to show you some rare albino corn and my uh, my egg squash, my little egg squash we were going to use for decoration for uh, for Christmas trees and stuff like that. That turned out to be this giant monster zucchini hybrid. <laughs> so that 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 doesn't produce very well. It doesn't produce. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one, and uh, stay tuned for another video.